This is News 4, live at 10. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Massive headaches for motorists traveling Interstate 44 west of St. Louis. An accident this afternoon damaged an overpass and that shut down Interstate 44 eastbound at Highway 100 west of Gray Summit. The highway is open tonight and News 4's Jonathan Hall is live via satellite at the scene. John? Well, Jules, the highway is open but the bridge is closed, cutting off access to businesses like this truck stop. The bridge suffered some major structural damage when a trucker carrying an oversized load rammed into the bridge about 12.15. I-44 eastbound was closed for eight hours as crews tried to assess the damage and clean up a fuel oil spill. The driver for Truckers Express out of Missoula, Montana, was hauling a pipe bending machine eastbound on 44. It reached nearly 16 feet into the air, about a foot too high for that overpass. The pipe bender damaged all of the bridge's structural support beams and punched a three-foot diameter hole through the top of the bridge. With Memorial Day weekend fast approaching, the highway department considered closing I-44 because of the danger of a bridge collapse that would have really impacted traffic coming home from the Lake of the Ozarks. But but luckily, we won't have to deal with that headache. As severe as the damage was, we had concern about whether we could uh, let traffic move under it. But we've had a, a crew come down from Jefferson City. Uh, they, they have checked it out and declared it safe to, to drive under it. The trucker was shaken, as were two women driving in a vehicle behind the truck, but we're told no one was injured. Tonight, crews used sand to sop up about 50 gallons of diesel fuel, which spilled from the pipe bending machine. Traffic was rerouted until about 8 tonight. This bridge was supposed to have been demolished and replaced in August, but now that this accident has happened, they'll try to move that date up earlier in the summer. Several businesses depend on the Route 100 West Bridge. Take the big truck stop here, the Pronto Travel Center. Employees here say the lion's share of their business comes from I-44 eastbound traffic, but it must use the bridge to get to the truck stop. I'd say today, first shift, they did only about seven or 30% of their usual business, and tonight we've only did probably about 15 to 25% of what we normally would have by now. Now, police say it is a miracle that nobody was killed nor injured in this accident. Those two women traveling in the van had their uh, window, their front windshield, smashed by some falling concrete. Had they been tailgating that truck, had the pipe bending machine hit their van, they certainly could have been killed or very seriously injured. So a lucky situation. Back to you guys. All right, John Hall reporting live from Franklin County. In other news, tonight, an Alton, Illinois woman is on a mission. She wants to have the dog that attacked her son killed. Carol Pratt says that is just the beginning. She also wants some changes in the law. Heidi Deja is here with the latest on that story. And, of course, we first reported on it for you last week when the boy was originally attacked by the dog. Right. Well, Larry and Julius, Carol Pratt says if any parent lived through what she has, they'd want some changes, too. It all started when a pit bull attacked her three-year-old son. A week and a half later, she has stopped the dog from being released to its owner and is now arming herself with petitions in hopes of changing minds and laws. Carol Pratt is hoping the scars on her son's arm will force lawmakers in Granite City to sit up and take notice. Three-year-old Brandon had 150 stitches after the pit bull attack. Since then, Carol got 350 people to sign a petition asking that the dog be killed and that Granite City make it illegal to keep pit bulls as pets. I've gone through hell for the last week and a half, and every time he wakes up crying, I cry too. How are you feeling now? Fine. Granite City already has a vicious dog ordinance. No vicious dog is allowed to be a pet. Unfortunately, most times it takes something like this before a dog is taken away. Even after all this is, you know, done, over with, forgotten about, I'm going to continue somehow, some way to keep fighting to get people to follow up on city ordinances. The dog has been locked up since the attack. His owner could have picked him up today, but Carol went to court to make sure that wouldn't happen. The owner didn't appear to make his own case. On June 7th, Carol returns to court to see if a judge will order the dog killed. Something's got to be done before next time a child dies from this. Get in and grab it, right? I tried to get hold of the dog's owner, but have yet to reach him. The mayor of Granite City tells me he is waiting to see what happens at the next hearing before he considers whether to seek an ordinance banning pit bulls. In the meantime, Carol Pratt says she'll continue fighting for tougher regulations regarding dogs. How's the boy's uh, emotional trauma handling as far as other dogs, being around dogs? Smaller dogs, he appears to be okay. He does uh, notice the bigger dogs, and of course, he continues to ask his mom, is that dog going to be here? Mm -hmm. So he's still, still afraid. 
All right, Hayes, Heidi, thank you very much. In other news now, Missouri Attorney General Jay Nixon is going after the Orkin man in a big way. A $20 million breach of contract lawsuit alleges the Orkin Pest Control Company cheated thousands of customers by reducing and misrepresenting the amount of termite protection they actually got. Nixon's investigation focuses on homes with basements and crawl spaces where Orkin failed to spray foundation walls, both inside and out, and the suit charges that some customers received as little as 30% of the required anti-termite dosage. The Attorney General's office wants Orkin to pay $1,000 per violation. In Mexico, a Roman Catholic cardinal is dead after a shootout at the Guadalajara airport. Reportedly, Cardinal Posados Ocampo and his driver got caught in the crossfire as two drug gangs started shooting. The Cardinal's car was hit with more than two dozen bullets. Police report at least five other victims were also killed. It's not clear if they were also innocent bystanders. Tonight, St. Louis Archbishop John May is out of the hospital. He was admitted to DePaul Health Center May 14th. Doctors have been treating him for a urinary tract infection. Tonight, Missouri Auditor Margaret Kelly says a proposed tax increase for education may exceed the amount of increase allowed without a statewide vote. But Governor Carnahan's office is saying the tax increase is within the limits permitted under the state constitution. A military jury will now choose punishment for a sailor who pleads guilty in the murder of a homosexual shipmate. The admitted killer's mother is from Fredericktown, Missouri, and that story on this night leads our night route for Monday, May 24th. Terry Helvey originally charged with premeditated murder in last year's death of Alan Schindler. A conviction could have meant the death penalty, but Helvey was allowed to plead guilty to the lesser charge, which at most could give him life in prison. Roberta Achtenberg is the new Assistant Secretary of HUD. Today, by a vote of 58 to 31, the Senate confirmed Achtenberg. She is a former San Francisco supervisor, a former law school professor, and admittedly, she is a lesbian. The United Mine Workers are expanding their strike, which began May 10th. In just half an hour, the union will order another 2,200 coal miners to join some 4,000 others already on the picket line. Pennsylvania is the newest state affected, with strikes over job security already underway in southern Illinois, in Indiana, and West Virginia. And a judge is ordering some Jefferson County teachers to feel better, fast. Dozens of House Springs teachers have been calling in sick each day. The teachers say they haven't had a pay raise in two years, but a judge says they cannot take their protest out in absences. They plan to take their protest directly to the board on Wednesday. And that is our night wrap for this Monday, May 24th, 1993. Let's find out what police emergency crews are working on right now. Steve Houston in the News 4 Operations Center. Steve? Well, Larry, right now we have photographer Nam Furman on the scene of a police shooting in the North County area. This is in the Glasgow Village area. It's outside a tavern at, in the 100 block of Glasshop. What we understand right now is that uh, police were called to this tavern earlier this evening where a man was reportedly flourishing a weapon. They got to the scene. Apparently, according to police on the scene, the man then flourished the sawed-off shotgun at a police officer. He shot the man. The man has been pronounced dead at the scene. There are a lot of police officers up there. They have crime scene tape up there as well. We have a photographer as well. We hope to have more information for you later on. That's it from the News 4 Operations Center. Larry, Julius? All right, Steve. Well, it seems all of us know someone who has had cancer. Coming up, you're going to see the struggle, the fear, the uncertainty that you go through when you find out you have cancer. In fact, it's quite by accident. Our own health reporter, Al Wyman, discovered he had cancer, the kind that is the second leading cause of deaths among men in the States. And next, someone may be peeping while you're in the tanning booth. Peter Bernard will tell you how you may be sure that no one is watching you as you tan. Julius Hunter, Larry Connors, meteorologist Trish Brown, and sports with Zipra Zeppa. This is News 4, live at 10. When you got a job to do, it's HQ to the rescue. Have some laughs. <laughs> And some love. And everyone went, oh. This week on Love Connection. Wow. Well, maybe you'd like to put on the headphones and relax for your weekly 20-minute tanning session in a local booth, but what you might not know is a small peephole might have been drilled into the wall of that tanning booth. And behind that peephole, somebody watching you as you soak up the rays. News 4 Action reporter Peter Bernard says... That scenario is being played out right here in the St. Louis area. He has some pictures.
to prove it. Peter? Yeah, I found a tanning salon in South County where there are so many holes, the walls look like Swiss cheese. And you can see them from the front door. Apparently, some customers have been using their tanning sessions to peep at other bodies instead of browning their own. The unofficial sideshow is going on at the Aloha Tan Spa off Lee May Ferry in Butler Hill in Melville. Take a look inside. At tanning bed level, inside the booth, there are a number of holes plugged with caulking. I counted at least three or four in this booth, an adjacent one had about as many. Well, we have some peepers. You know, I'm not sure if it's women or men. Well, whoever is doing it, it's been going on for some time. I knew of the problem even before I came to work here. All I can do is keep patching them up and try to catch the person that's doing it. And with that, my view to the poked up booth was I mean, blocked. I can't do that until... The person yeah. spying in this undercover police video from Florida was caught. He's the manager of a tanning salon caught in the act of peeping at female customers. Tanning salon customers can take steps to make sure they're not being spied on by employees or other customers. I look for mirrors in the rooms. You know, look and see where the mirrors are attached. Rush says you should check for adjacent rooms that may hide a peeping Tom. You know, turn the lights off mm -hmm. in the room. When you have, if there's a light in that room, turn that light off yep. in that room. And then you want to look and see if there's light shining through the mirror. So there's no, no peeking no, around? No, right. <laughs> no, no. Okay, those are just where posters were put up or something? Yeah, I guess. Okay. Check the so room out. Look, look behind yeah, curtains. Like if you're not comfortable, move to another room or go somewhere else. If you see evidence of holes being poked in the wall, you may not be alone when you lie down for your tanning session. The owner of Aloha Tan says he plugs the holes as soon as he finds them. He says the booths are checked after each visit. As for legal action you can take, if, some, if you discover someone looking in at you, you can sue for invasion of privacy. Equipment and tanning times are regulated both in Missouri and Illinois, but peepers are not part of that regulation. Is that what that old song means, Jeepers Creepers, where'd you get those peepers? <laughs> I think peepers? that's what they wrote this about, but this is a serious situation. That people is. not knowing that they're being looked at, it, mm -hmm. it, it can get embarrassing, and uh, people want to do something about it, and these are yeah. some things they can do. What creeps that would do that, anyway? You'd want to know. All right, thank you, Peter. No complaints about the weather today. Now, Trish Brown is next with our forecast, and this is Al Wyman. I've spent years covering other people's medical problems. Tonight, my own battle with cancer. My story's coming up. Well, there's no E in potato. Unless... Generic prescription drugs can save you up to 50% or more. It's important to talk to your care pharmacist at National, the Caring Pharmacy. Nice day. Cool night already, though. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. It day. is. It's mm -hmm. cooling down very quickly. You know, we're seeing a major weather pattern change coming in place. We have had rain nearly every other day here so far in May, but that change is going to mean we are going to see less of the rain and further spreads of sunshine, and that's going to take place this week. Lots of good news in store for the forecast, so let's get started. This morning, our low temperature was 67 degrees, and because of the mild start, we warmed up to 80. And yes, it is a cool night there already because our temperature has already cooled down to our low from this morning. 67 is where we're at on the outside. We have mostly clear skies. Winds are out of the northwest. That's that cold weather direction. They're blowing in at 7 miles per hour, and we're going to see a bit of a chill moving into the air. So we head into early tomorrow morning. This is a bunch of cloud cover that's been in throughout the area, mainly partly cloudy skies across the Channel 4 area. The rain has been occurring well to the south and also to the east. This system has been a cold front, and it brought with, the, with it the rain and also the clouds. But since it's moving out, we're now seeing cooler temperatures filtering in. In fact, inside the city, we're going to be about 10 degrees cooler early tomorrow morning than what we were this morning. That leads temperatures into the upper 50s. In some surrounding areas, we could even see lows uh, in the upper 40s. That's if you're out in uh, areas that are not very populated away from the city. And then as we head into tomorrow, cool temperatures, not quite as warm as 80, but very pleasant with highs in the mid-70s. This system that's to our south is a cold front that brought us to chilly weather. It's going to continue to push to the south. What it's going to do for us, it's going to act like a sponge. It's going to seep up all the moisture. That means we remain with sunny skies, even though we have two systems that are converging on the Channel 4 area. Even as we head into Wednesday, it looks like we'll have at least partly sunny skies. Then Thursday, these move in, and we might see a chance for some isolated thunderstorms on Thursday. But that's going to be about it. As you wake up, we will have the sunshine. Cool temperatures, 57 for low here in St. Louis. Winds will be out of the northwest at 5 to 8 miles per hour. Your 24-hour forecast will call for a high of 76 with partly to mostly sunny skies tomorrow. And your four-day forecast, again, including isolated thunderstorms by Thursday, scattered thunderstorms by Friday, temperatures gradually warming up to 80 by Thursday, and then just a touch cooler as we head into Friday. And everybody's asking about that Memorial Day, sure, yeah. our first unofficial weekend of summer. It looks mm -hmm. like a chance for rain Sunday into Monday, but still 
very mild temperatures. All right, And Trish. it's a long way off, so okay. it could change. Thank you, Trish. He originated health and science reporting on St. Louis television almost 20 years ago. And during that time, our colleague Al Wyman has covered everything from births to biopsies to breakthroughs. Beginning tonight, he's going to present one of the most unusual stories he's ever covered, his own battle with cancer. Al Wyman here. Now it's uh, one story that I know you never thought you'd see. Well, uh, Larry, Julius, you may be wondering why I'm doing this. Well, it, it's the hope that by telling my story, I might help someone's life. On this, project two weeks ago. this is the Al Wyman St. Louisans are used to seeing, and that I was used to being, a reporter on the move covering other people's medical problems. But moments after I finished this story at St. Louis Children's Hospital last September, I heard three of the most frightening words I could ever hear. You've got cancer. It was even more frightening to know that the kind of cancer I had is the second leading cause of death in men in the United States. I learned I had prostate cancer. Do you take any medication? Do you wear glasses? No cough, no shortness of breath? Do you smoke? Suddenly, my life was turned upside down. And what time are you coming in that morning? Uh, 6 a.m. The medical reporter was now the medical patient. It's hard to be objective when you're the patient. That's why I asked Julius Hunter to interview my wife, Glenda, and me about how devastating it all was. There were many, many nights when, uh, it would be very late at night, and I'd be upstairs getting ready for bed, and there's no Al, where's Al? And I would come downstairs, and he'd be sort of staring off into space in the den. He was, he was very frightened. He was very, very frightened, both of us were. You didn't think you were going to die? It crossed my mind, sure, because even having the surgery, there's the possibility that, uh, you know, just going under general anesthesia, that you may not come out of that. Once it starts, the struggle to deal with this disease is like being on a roller coaster. I knew quite a bit about cancer because of my work, but knowledge can be dangerous. Knowing too much made it hard for me to keep my imagination from running wild. At my lowest point, I tried to learn as much as I could about my cancer. It was in the prostate, a small gland about the size of a chestnut at the base of the bladder. It's part of the male reproductive system. But as other people with cancer will tell you, no matter where it is, the emotional impact is devastating. How in the world does something like this happen? Uh, you, you know, you try to eat all the right things, uh, fruits and vegetables, you, you know, try to stay away from too much red meat, uh, eat a lot of fish, you know, do all the dietary things, do the exercise, and you... Uh, you sort of think, well, how can this happen? After learning about treatment options, radiation or surgery, my wife and I met with Dr. William Catalona to discuss the option I chose, surgery, to remove the prostate. I simply didn't want to exist with cancer in my body. There's really no way of knowing it until we actually have the microscopic examination. But, uh, you know, we can, we can sort of tell because those nerves run right down the front of the of the rectal wall and the prostate sits on top of the nerves and we like to just lift the prostate up off the nerves and so if it separates very nicely that's usually it now the roller coaster is moving faster what is that first there are pre-surgery tests and something all patients should consider if you have enough time before surgery is scheduled donating your own blood for use during surgery i did first time you hear the word cancer is, is um a little frightening um, and then what then finding out how far it's gone and the day before I went in for surgery I wanted to talk with someone who had already been through what I was facing to help me prepare for what was ahead they get you into bed pretty quickly and uh, ask a few questions start an IV and pretty quickly that's it yeah next thing I remember was waking up I don't remember any excruciating pain there was some discomfort it, it um, uh, but it isn't greatly painful. Now I was at the top of the hill, about to plunge over the edge. The roller coaster was about to take me on one of the most incredible journeys of my life, and I decided one of the most incredible stories I've ever covered. This is as far as you go. All right, bye, sweetie. Hey, baby. I love you. you. Got lipstick. That's all right. Need all that I can get. I know you will. Okay. All right, and you're gonna be busy. Okay. Okay. I'll see you on the other side. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, can you help her? Can you help her?
watching this uh, still makes me uncomfortable, but tomorrow night I'll take you into the operating room with me and I'll tell you how you can get a free prostate cancer screening test, a test that could save your life. A lot of folks out there, you know, they don't really know what striking anyone in their family, but you're like family to many of our viewers. Oh, yeah. so, uh, Certainly to us. Well, yes. if it could happen to me, it can happen to anybody. Yeah. All right, Al. We're looking forward to tomorrow night's report to learn some things, and we're glad you're okay. Me too. Okay. <laughs> All right. Get ready to write now, because Mike Brown's newest Easy Money list is coming up in this next commercial break. You might see your name on the screen with the money amount next to it, so watch for that. And Zip is coming up next with sports. More overtime for the Redbirds as the cards come closer for uh, another page in the record books. First, here's a look at the day on Wall Street, up about 15 points. Channel 4 has teamed up with the American Red Cross to help our local flood victims. Call 658-2000 to volunteer your time. Help us help our neighbors. This is the Infinity J30. On this Anheuser-Busch beers. Well, first of all, we want to find out how the birds did tonight. All right, Zipper. Well, it's never a dull moment with this team, guys. I'll tell you, they make it exciting. <laughs> For the third time in their last four outings, the Cardinals blew a late inning lead, but then they won the game in extra innings. Tonight's final in Montreal, Cards 4, Expos 1 in 11 innings. Let's go to Olympic Stadium. This is the only offense Cards had the first 10 innings. Bases loaded walk to Mark Witten, brought home Gilkey. It was 1 to nothing in the sixth. They almost got more runs. Bases loaded, same inning. Zeal, line shot. Mike Lansing, a sensational grab, got Zeal at first. Meanwhile, Rene Arocha pitching a sensational game. I mean, he shut him out for the first seven innings, took a shutout into the eighth, and then had a little bad luck. Part of the reason the Expo scored their only run, this ground ball that hit the first base bag should have been an out. That loaded the bases. The only run the Expos got scored on a sacrifice fly. But in the 11th, Louis Alisea, the game-winning hit, this triple down the line brought in two runs. Eric Pappas later had doubled in another. It was 4-1. Lee Smith in for his third chance to break the Cardinals' record for saves. This time, the big guy didn't blow it. He got the last out right here in a fly ball off the bat of McIntosh. Lee Smith becomes the all-time Cards leader in saves. Cards win it 4-1 to one in 11 innings. Meanwhile, the Phillies won, so the Cards still seven back. Hockey, you know, back in 1986, Jacques Demers coached the Blues to within one victory of the Stanley Cup Finals. Well, now, Jacques is going to get his chance to win the Cup. His Canadians finish off the Islanders tonight in Game 5. Let's go to the Forum in Montreal, where they were waving that Canadians flag. And with good reason, the Canadians all over the Islanders. Brian Bellow scoring here. Canadians won it 5-2. to two. And then the celebration began as they head to the Stanley Cup Finals. Basketball, Western Finals. Phoenix wins it 105-91. to 91. Let's go to the America West Coliseum, where Seattle didn't have it tonight. Here come the Supersonics. Easy jump shot, right? Wrong, they miss it, and Charles Barkley takes off. He says, I'm going to go through the entire team and dunk the ball. Sir Charles did. Phoenix wins big in game one. Oh, it's Monday night. That means it's time to play another hole in the old Dream 18. Let's go out to our Dave Simons at Bogey Hills. All right, Zip, my guest today, you either love him or you hate him. To some, his voice is like fingernails on a chalkboard. To others, he is the ultimate right-thinking kind of a guy. Talking about Kevin Slayton of KZK. Kevin, thanks for coming out. Hey, Dave, thanks for having me. Uh, I appreciate you coming out, and we're going to play the very tough and treacherous number 15. You've been here before? Yeah, once or so. Yeah. Once or so, and you're telling me how tough and treacherous this hole is. What would you know about this hole? I, I don't That doesn't qualify you as an expert. You don't know anything about this hole. You played it once or twice, and you're telling me how tough it is. This was going to be a long day. Kevin went first and promptly popped his tee shot high into the air. It was straight but short, dangerous on this extremely long par four. I went next, as if there was anyone else, and powered my longest drive ever on the Dream 18, way down the fairway. And to make sure I wouldn't lose my advantage over Kevin, I quickly told him that Dow Maxville was the best general manager in baseball. My devious plan worked. Kevin was so shaken by what I had said, his second shot fell far short of the green. Of course, my second shot didn't fare much better. Using a five wood from 200 yards out, my Michelob golf ball tailed at the end, landing on the right fringe. After Kevin successfully planted his third shot in the middle of the green, I punched a sand wedge that rolled around the cup. 
We both had a shot at par, so I went to work again. I snuck around Kevin and right there told him Brian Sutter was a terrific hockey coach. Since Kevin is very anti-Sutter, my plan worked again. He just couldn't muster the strength to get his par putt to the hole. Then again, either could I, so we both tapped in for bogey. All right, Kevin, once again, thanks for coming out. I really enjoyed it. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, from one sportscaster to another, have a great summer, everyone, and go Cardinals. Go Cardinals? Cardinals, they don't have hitting, they can't pitch, they can't run the bases, their bullpen is weak except for Lee Smith, they don't have a manager who can manage, they don't have a general manager who knows what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Enough already, that's it in sports. No, no, and Kevin, he's still going. He's still going. <laughs> no, I know him, and he is a sweet guy. I mean, he's almost a pansy, he just likes to do that for he show. Would, he would argue with you over this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right, that's it for now. Thank you for getting your news. For this now. is your 24-hour news source.